All right. So, I guess maybe I'll read a few poems, and then we'll talk a little while, and our show will be uh, just about over then. All right. Well, I think as I mentioned that I, I do write love poems, I do write political poems, I do write environmental poems, uh, and then headline poems. Uh, this happens to be a dream poem. I, I, I just pulled it out. Uh, uh, it's very short. Last night, I had a dream in a room, four white walls. I'm taking a test. I fail. What? How can that be? It's a citizenship test. Guess I am a very, very bad consumer. I <laughs> uh, like it. And this is called The Torture Report, one of my cheery poems. <laughs> I sit on my deck in the mornings early, watching my dog play, listening to the birds entertain us, feeling the cool morning air float over the five acres. I sip my organic French roast and feel content with my life. Later, I turn on non-corporate media news. The torture report, documenting US military torture of Iraqis in Mosul. I turn away from the television, still holding my French roast, still sitting on my couch, still petting my dog, as the suffering of human beings fills my front room. How can this be? How can we allow this? How can we have ha such hearts of stone? How can we believe that torture is good, is right? How can we seek revenge on a suffering people? How can we condemn what others do when we do it too? How can we try to justify this pain and cruelty? Have we learned nothing? Have we no moral ground? Have we no ethics? Have we become the enemy we want? To destroy. My next cheery poem, <laughs> Cheery Saturday. Um, see, see then, see, I, I should get back to love poems, right? <laughs> My body is not big enough to block the bombs falling on children, driving shrapnel into their Syrian skulls. My hands are not strong enough to hold back the missiles from destroying a city block, a family's home, a mosque while people pray. My arms are not wide enough to hold the child in a pink satin dress screaming, the father carrying close to his chest, <coughs> his daughter with tear and tear in his eyes. The grandmother arms stretched to the sky, the smallest boy with a brown soft hair washed up on the sand. My arms are not wide enough to hold all this misery. My brain is exploding. My heart is splintering. My body and bones are cracking. So I decided to write an eyeliner poem. A what? Eyeliner. I like eyeliner. Oh, okay. It's kind of like the big pen poem? <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. Uh, okay. So this moves away from politics, right? <clears throat> Maybe. All I want is to wear eyeliner. I mean, really, eyeliner is my makeup, my only seductive move. My eyes are in serious trouble. Blufferitis, chalazians blocking oil ducts, epithelial deterioration, surgery to scrape the top layer of cells in, in one eye. We have five layers, you know, so no big deal. Then a bubble and a band-aid in my eye to promote new, a new layer of cells. Hurt like hell for weeks and weeks. For months now, no eyeliner. I want to wear eyeliner. How difficult is that? My focus is eyeliner. Eyeliner is my focus. Not fracking, not coal dust, not Fukushima radiation on the West Coast, not Trump, my God, not Trump, not getting the EPA, not the richest cabinet in the history of U.S. politics, not the bombing of Syria, Yemen, Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, not the starving children, not mothers who can't swim drowning in the ocean, not fathers trying to find safety for their families, not Rex Tillerson, the climate denier, not Betsy DeVos, hater of public education and sister of Eric Prince, mercenary for hire, not ocean acidification, not killing of bears and wolves while they hibernate, not the hundreds of species dying every day. No, not any of these things. Eyeliner. I need eyeliner. Deep, 
green eyeliner. Smooth, smooth lines for my green eyes. The color of nature while we still have nature to see. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Um, let's see, I'm going to read a couple more poems and then we'll have more of a discussion or whatever else you would like to do here. Oh, <laughs> I was looking at the last line. That's okay. Um, I want to start a new political party, the Mother Earth Party, the Pachamama Party, the Peace Planet and People Party. Platform? Let me tell you. We would celebrate Mother Earth and care for all species. We would cultivate compassion. We would provide for everyone. No one could make insane profits on the backs of others. No one could hoard millions, billions while children starve. No one could destroy the land or poison the water or toxify the air. Big Pharma could not keep people sick for more profits. We are the people. Powerful. Powerful. We are the people. F. Monsanto. Okay. So maybe I should move to uh, my love poem. I'd like to hear that. I've never heard a love poem by Pamela Spoto. You've never heard a love poem? No. Well, then it's time. Okay, good. Okay. This is, this is kind of a love poem. This is a transition into the love poem series. It's called Sunday. I like riding in your truck, the way it moves when you shift. And seatbelt free, I like sitting next to you, really close, looking at your face, how your lashes touch. From the dash, Sunday passion hangs on chains. In the back, the rope and pitchfork tangle.